We're going to take a look at a geometrical interpretation of the singular value decomposition. We begin by generating the coordinates of a spring. And I have a script that will plot these points with a rainbow of colors. So here's what the spring looks like. We can see that it's centered around the vertical z-axis. To make things a little more interesting, I will rotate the spring slightly around the y-axis before we start to manipulate it. And so I've got this script, another script, that generates the rotation matrix for rotating around a given axis. So we rotate the coordinates of x and replot them. And here's the new spring that's been slightly rotated around the y-axis clockwise. Now I want to show the effect that a particular matrix A has on the spring. I've constructed this matrix to perform a specific transformation. So let's take a look at what A does to the input points in X. It appears as though A has stretched the spring along its main axis and also rotated the string of the spring slightly around the z-axis. Now let's take a look at the singular value decomposition of A. The SVD breaks the matrix into three components, U, S, and V, such that A is equal to U times S times V transpose. Furthermore, U and V only perform rotations, whereas S the, in the middle performs scaling. And so now it's clear why S looks the way it does. The two must be for stretching the spring along its main axis. But S by itself would of course only stretch the spring along the first default axis, namely the X axis in our case. And we need to stretch it along some arbitrary diagonal axis. One way we could do this is to first rotate the spring until it's lined up with the X axis stretch it directly along the x-axis, and then rotate it to its final destination. And this is exactly what the components of the singular value decomposition do. Let's take a look at V. It looks almost exactly like our matrix for rotating around the y-axis. Now let's look at it on the plot. So we'll multiply x by V transpose. And now we see that V has, in fact, rotated the spring so that it's lying along the x-axis. Now we can multiply by S, and we should see that it stretches the spring out along the x-axis, which is what we wanted. Finally, let's look at the last component of the SVD, which is U. U is performing the last step, namely rotating the matrix back to uh, the, or directly to its final destination. And so we can think of U actually as first undoing the rotation performed by V transpose to get it down, uh, to get the spring back to its starting orientation, and then doing the intended rotation around the Z axis. And so you see here that those two are equal. Now we can plot with U also applied. We will have finished the transformation uh, of the whole matrix A. We see that the V mapped the spring down to the x-axis. The S stretched it out. 
and then the U rotated it to its final destination.